Now for me, I'm not building SAS from scratch. I just want to modify Bootstrap. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove all this stuff. And I'm also gonna just remove all of this from here. And this one as well. So now let's try to use Bootstrap. So again, remember, this is using style CSS file, which should be now located locally. That was that file that we're compiling in here. Now let's go to Bootstrap and get the installation. So there is our Bootstrap website. I'm gonna go get started and we don't want to use any of the CDNs anymore. We just want a regular install. Of course, why would they make it easy and put it right in here? Okay, I guess it might be under download. All right, there it is. NPM install bootstrap. We're gonna go back to our Visual Studio code and just run that installation really quickly. Now what it's gonna do, it's gonna put that inside of this modules and it's in here someplace. See, there's this bootstrap. We have all of these other modules installed because of the other things we've installed. And basically that was really parcel. But if we look at this bootstrap, see it has SCSS folder. And then if I look inside of that, see they have all of these files that actually create bootstrap. And one of the entry points in this is this bootstrap SCSS. So as you can see, what it does, it includes all of these files. Now the question is, how are we gonna use this? So we don't want to go in here and modify any of these files. What we want to do, we want to basically change things that we need to change and leave the rest the way it is. So in order for me to do that, I'm just gonna keep this in mind for a second and close this. We're just gonna go here and create a SAS file for our project. So I'm just gonna go and call it styles.scss again. You can call it anything you want, it doesn't matter. And what I want to do in this one, I just simply want to go and open that bootstrap SCSS, this file they have, and basically just copy this whole thing and go to my styles and place it in here. So you don't technically have to import all of these. So if there are things you don't need out of bootstrap, this is one of the advantages, you don't have to actually use them. But one thing that's gonna be different here is that all of these are importing all of these files that are located in the same folder over here, but they're no longer located in the same folder for us. So for us, all of these files, if I just try to look at this directory structure, it's basically node modules and then bootstrap and then SCSS and then we get to all of these different files that are included in here. So if we want to include all of these, we need to prefix it with that node. So let's just type that path here for a second. And then inside of that, we will have all of these. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut that for a second and I'm gonna do a quick replace in this. So I'm gonna do control F, command F to get this. I'm basically gonna search for import space quotation and I'm gonna open this and I'm gonna replace it with that same thing and I'm gonna paste that path that I had for this, which was that beginning we need. So I'm gonna take that and do replace all and now we should have all of these replaced with the path that should be including all of these files and save it. Now, if this is done well and I didn't mess anything up, we should be able to now compile this and get one bootstrap file. So let's go ahead and try to do this. I don't need this anymore, I'm gonna close that. Let's go back and run our bundler to see if that actually works, right? So I'm gonna close this for a second. We will need to get back to it in a little bit, but for now, I'm gonna close that and let's just run our command. So we're gonna run that parcel build and my file name is again the same and the output directory, I guess I'm gonna use the same. Again, no minify for now and no source maps. So I'm gonna hit enter. As you can see, we have a CSS file. We should have that entire thing. This will be basically that CSS that Bootstrap creates for you. So this is what comes stock out of Bootstrap.
Now, at this point, we want to be able to modify this. Let's actually go and copy some Bootstrap template and put it in here so we can actually verify that this whole thing is working. So I'm gonna remove all of this, go to Bootstrap website and get some template. And the best thing to do here is to go to this examples probably and grab one of these examples so it has a bunch of elements in there. See if you wanted to work with forms and stuff like that, you could open this one. If you wanted to do something like this one, you can open this. Again, it really depends, it's up to you. I'm just gonna do this one, it doesn't matter. Does it have a button? It does, good. I'm just gonna open the page source, select all of this, copy that, go back to my project, and paste it right in here. So I don't need the script, so I'm gonna remove all of that. I don't care about that. And I'm just gonna scroll up to see what CSS it's including. So as you can see, it's including bunch of things in here. So icons, all of this, I'm just gonna remove all of that to the bottom of this head section, just like that. So we should have now this one line and I'm gonna remove that one line too. And I'm gonna replace that entire line, these two, I guess, all of that. Basically just simplify this to keep this. And I'll do a link to my own CSS file, which is gonna be that style CSS. Apparently it's styles CSS. And that's really the home HTML. So there we go, that's our bootstrap styles and their image isn't here, so that doesn't matter. So now let's say you wanna change the color for the buttons here, right? And you see there's the shade of the color when you hover over it, all of that stuff you'll probably wanna change. So if this is supposed to be purple, you don't want the hover effect to be blue. We basically do this, we go to our CSS and we go and find what variable we have to reset. So what we do, we just go to our node modules open that bootstrap, open that SCSS, and find this thing called variables. There it is. So now this variables file, see, has all the default variables that are set on this. See, there's all this white, there's all this gray colors, black, but we wanna change that blue color that comes from here. See that blue? It's this color right here. So I wanna change that to my own color. So what I do, I copy that. I don't change it in these files. I'm not touching their files. I go to my own CSS file and reset that. And we don't want this to be default anymore. That default means that if you override it, it's not gonna keep it anymore. Now I wanna remove that and change it to my own color. Let's say we want it to be red, just to make this obvious. Save this. Keep everything else the same. Let's just go back and rerun our build. And that should compile a new style CSS file. Let's go check out what happened with our template and see how all the blues are now working with that red color that I changed. And that went basically across the board and I was able to change the primary color on the entire website, just like that and see the hover effect adjusts according to that. The same way you can basically change anything you need to change. So there are tons of things you might want to change. So for example, I don't know, when you maybe click in this, see the shadow that you get, maybe you don't like that, this box shadow. So you wanna go check if there's already a variable set. So you always wanna start by using the variables for this. So let's go see if we can find this. So I'm gonna go here and that should be our input element. So I'll go to that variables file again and try to find, I'm just gonna search for input. See that brings us to buttons and forms and that gives us uh, the input button paddings and all this other type of stuff. We wanna see not the button, we just want our regular input elements. There's our forms. So see there is the focus background and there is the focus box shadow. That's probably that box shadow that's doing what it's doing. So there's this variable that's being used for that.
so there's that box shadow see it says zero 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 and then it sets it with this width that comes from here and it goes with that color that goes from here so for example if i don't like the current one the current one was this really thick red line maybe you want it to be thinner so i should be able to change that to 0 0.1 or something like that and see what happens so again i'm gonna copy that variable go to my styles paste it here change it to 0 0.1 remove the default save it let me go back and reload and let's see what happens is it a little thinner line now see that's a little thinner line that it was before if you want more thin so i can do that and now i have this very tiny line instead of having that really thick highlighting so this is how you can actually replace these things and get your own colors and whatever else you need to get now the question that remains is that after you did this you changed the colors and you got your css let me close this because we don't need this anymore and i'm going to close this variables file too so after we run this, it's going to give you this style CSS. See now that blue is actually red. That's our new color. And you could just keep the blue blue and also just change the primary color instead, which is right now the same. So it's changing all of those. So there are a lot of things to look into and I can do a separate video to talk about those if you're interested. Now we have this CSS. Now, usually you wouldn't do this. You would minify this. So I would go here and build this instead of this no minify. I would make sure that I minify that thing. And now it should be basically the same thing, just minified. And for the browser, it's the same for us, impossible to read. Now at this point, we need to make sure that our web app is using this, right? So my whole point was, this is my web app. And I'm getting the stylings and buttons and everything I get, which the only thing we'll be able to probably tell now would be the button. And I want to change it to my own coloring, stylings, whatever it is. So let's say you changed all of that. Now I want to make sure that this project is actually using that. So you could either basically just upload that file to your own server and host it. But if you don't know where to host it, you can just use GitHub. So what you could do, you could just go to github.com and register for an account. Now, once you register for an account, you should be able to create your own repositories. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna hit this plus sign, go new repository, and give this a name. So I went with this. I wanna make sure this is public. That's that. I'm not gonna initialize any readme or anything, create repository. So in this repository, now we can create a file or we can upload that file that we just did so one or the other so i'm just going to go ahead and upload the file grab that css file that was just generated not the scss but css and drag it over here and i'm just going to scroll down and commit these changes so now i have it here now we need to make sure we can actually make this publicly accessible so we can use it in our web app. So to do this, you need to change some of your settings. So you only have to do this once for this repository. You could add new files to this. You wouldn't have to do this again. But what you do after you get this file in here, you go to settings. And just to show you something before I go here, see this branch right now is called master. It might be a good idea to change it, but Right now, we're just doing this to get the files on. So I just go settings, scroll down and find this section. It says GitHub pages. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do instead of this none, I'm going to choose that master branch. So now if I scroll down and find that same section, see now I have this published link. So if I open that link, it says nothing is found. And that's because it's linking to the root. 
And in our root folder, there's no HTML file like index HTML that needs to load. So this one is called styles.css. So if I just go here in the end, add styles.css, that file name, that should load that file, which is now publicly available. So now I can just copy the link and go back to my own web app or whatever web application you wanted to use this on and go to my main HTML. And now instead of doing this link, that's linking to their CDN, I'm gonna use my own. I'm just gonna comment this one so I can put this back later if I want to. But here we're gonna make another link. So this is the link, the relevant style sheet. Now here as the hyperlink, I'm gonna just paste that link from GitHub. Save this. So now I go back and reload my app. And if I go to add customers, see my button is red, similar to how we changed it over there. So now I'm using my custom styles loading from here for this project. Now let me just quickly run this parcel command on Windows 2 to make sure it works the same way. All right, that looks pretty good. It did compile. I'm also just gonna install Bootstrap here. And there is Bootstrap with the same files in here the same way. And that should do it for this video. If you have any specific questions, what you want to see, please comment. If it's reasonable, I'll include it in the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.